Um, my name is Matthew Abbott. I'm the Chief Product Officer here, here at Earth Solutions, um, and I get the privilege to walk everyone through uh, what we're going to talk about today. And, and what we're going to talk about today is how we're at Earth Solutions using satellite uh, data um, you know, to really determine depth of cover for our customers here. And this is something that's, that's brand new that we're doing here, and we're excited to, uh, to share with everyone today. Um, so just a few things before I get started here. So um, first off here, um, this session will be recorded. I do get very excited about the topics that, are, that, we, that we do here at Earth Solutions. I love, I love what we do. I have a tendency to get very excited and talk pretty quickly. So the good thing is we are recording this, and this will be published to our YouTube uh, channel here. And I'll give you the handle of our YouTube, the name of our YouTube channel here, that you can actually revisit this at any point in time or share it around with anyone else you would like to see it. So that's one thing. Um, second thing is it is not open mic, so you will not be able to ask questions with your voice. But at any point in time, please feel free to ask questions in the chat. Uh, there is a webinar chat that you will see, uh, you know, in the, the Zoom uh, session here. Uh, feel free to ask questions. And when you ask those questions, we'll wait to the end and then I'll go through a Q&A session where I'll, I'll answer your questions here. Um, but with that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started here. So first thing, again, Matthew Abbott, I'm the Chief Product, or, product Officer here at Earth Solutions. Um, you know, excited to walk you through what we're doing with depth of cover. So what we generally like to start with is really the problem. And when we say the problem, it's really in our conversation with the customers, we constantly hear about problems that you guys are trying to solve. And one of those problems has definitely recently emerged around depth of cover um, and that being a very manual process. So, you know, when we drill into what, what we've heard you all tell us here, this is what we've been hearing, right? And of course, we all know that there's earth movement, right? And as the earth moves, ground covers the assets and that changes over time. We all, we all are aware of that. Um, you know, and, and the thing is, is that that ground cover can actually increase or decrease the likelihood of, of issues on pipelines and your assets underground. And again, we all know that. But one of the biggest challenges that we've been hearing in the in industry is that it is a very expensive process to determine the depth of cover right now. So right now it's done manually, you know, which is usually via hand probes or ILI runs, uh, you know, the, most, the two most common things that we keep hearing in the industry. And that has a massive cost to it. So at our solutions, what we like to do is we like to solve problems that our customers have. And in order to solve this problem from a solution standpoint, what we've done now is we've released a new offering and the offering is called Pipeline Integrity Insights Depth of Cover. And I'll go into a little bit more about, um, you know, kind of our Earth Insights category here. Um, but this one is specific to depth of cover here. And what we're doing with depth, depth of cover is we are publishing a depth of cover form that captures all this different data on it. And then what we're doing is we have a full integration with a partner of ours, of ours that captures satellite imagery and then pulls in that data into that particular depth of cover form. The nice thing about that, once we have that data, now we can start doing analysis on that data. We can start calculating the change of depth at certain lat longs, which we'll get into a little bit more. And because it's now inside of our system now, inside of Utilisphere, you now have the ability to take field actions or export the data, which we'll go into a little bit more. Now, again, from a value standpoint here, it's really looking at specific lat long locations, determining the depth of cover change at those locations. And the whole goal of this is really to minimize the amount of future surveys you have and to help prioritize the, the surveys that you need to do. So if we can have a big area of coverage and determine the depth of cover across a big area of coverage, you know, without you having to go out manually, now you can see areas of change that are that are you know that are that are you need to focus on areas where you've lost a lot of depth of cover that need to be a focus, um, you know, to get additional uh, field techs on site to actually uh, do some work in those particular areas. Now, from a process standpoint, the process is actually very simple. At, at, Earth, at Earth, we try to make things as simple as we can here, and this is the way the process looks here of, of the solution that we're the offering that we have this pipeline integrity insights for depth of cover offering. So as a customer, you all have hand probe data, you have ILI data, you provide that data to Earth Solutions, right? And generally what customers have is we see that data come in many, in many formats, right? Generally, most common is a spreadsheet or CSV file. That's perfectly fine. We can also import the data in, in with, uh, via other means, shape files, uh, APIs, and so on. But once that, once that data is into Utilisphere, now we have specific lat longs of what the previous depth of cover findings were. Again, using hand probe or ILI, or it could be any other method that you want here. Now we've got the lat longs. Now our satellite provider can actually see those lat longs and point the satellite imagery directly at, that, at those locations and then pass back the data to us in which we can determine the difference calculations now. We can do the, the calculation of the differences uh, at those each lat long here. 
And I'll show you exactly what that looks like from a solution standpoint. This is really from a process standpoint. So from a process standpoint, very simplistic, not, not too complicated at all. Now, you know, why are we using satellite imagery? We've looked at many, many different things, really. Um, and our goal, again, is to solve a massive cost problem and that it's very costly right now to, to determine depth of cover, right? Again, manual, uh, we'll go into that a little bit more, and then ILI costs a lot of money. Using satellite imagery here, we can reduce the cost and really expand the coverage. And that's our goal. We can take a look at your entire pipeline, you know, pipeline system here uh, across multiple locations here and determine what those changes have been. And that's, again, going to help you prioritize and focus on particular areas that you need to focus on. So from a process standpoint, in terms of in the product itself, it's, it's again, we try to make it as simple as possible. We have an app that we call Pipeline Integrity Insights for depth of cover here. We enable that app and we turn it on. Then we work with you to import the prior depth of cover readings. So again, those manual readings, the ILI readings, if you have them in a, a CSV, a shape file, a, an Excel file, if it's an API that you need to pass the data in, we work with you on how we get the data in. Once the data is in and we know those locations now, again, we pass that to our satellite provider via an API, and then they pass back the data from the imagery that they get uh, into the system. And then we automatically calculate the, ch the change in depth of cover from the prior readings to the new readings using that satellite imagery. Okay, and then, and then of course, the most important thing is that there's a way for you as customers, you as, as, as uh, you know, as, uh, as our, our, uh, our clients here to visualize the areas that have the most depth of cover loss. So what we're doing here is we're looking at vertical data. When you give us a lat long with a prior reading, we can take that exact location now and point a satellite at, at that, right? And what we're using for satellite is what's called INSAR. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's really, uh, the nice thing about INSAR is that it can actually go through cloud cover and so on, right? And then, um, you know, we, we're looking at the locations above that pipe center line, really, which equates that depth of cover. Once we point the satellite to it, we have the NSAR data on it. We can see what that change in elevation has been over time, right, from the time you gave us the prior reading. And once we have it in there, we can do it every year, every frequency, every certain frequency to see what that change looks like here. And the nice thing about doing that is like LIDAR is another technique, but that's a very expensive technique compared to what we're doing with the INSAR on satellite, again, providing the most coverage as well with reducing the cost. Now, this is what it actually looks like. At the end of the day, you know, this is all nice, but if we don't give you a way to easily visualize it, um, you know, it's not, not as important here. You've got to have a way to digest the information. So on the right-hand side, what you're seeing is a real screenshot here in Utilisphere of, of, of a depth of cover reading here. Um, Again, each row in that screenshot is a lat and long location with a prior measurement for depth of cover. Now what we do is run that INSAR imagery over top of it here. We get that data back. And what we're calculating then is the delta, the elevation delta, which is the difference in change in, in depth of cover here. So anything that's a negative is going to be of a concern, especially if it's a negative with a large number. It means there's been a massive change in depth of cover, and that's going to be a focus for you. So right here, what, what you can do is you can come in here and click on the elevation delta column, and it will sort to show you which areas have the have lost the most depth, which areas have gained the most depth, and that's how you can work to prioritize here. Now, not only do you get this particular view, which helps you kind of get a view across all these different lat longs of prior measurements you have, we also give you a details view. So you can click on one of those to isolate those, and this is a, a good example of that, right? This particular uh, depth of cover reading was a hand probe originally. Um, we ran the, ANS, the, uh, the, you know, the INSAR data, the INSAR readings over top of it, and we see a depth of cover change or the elevation delta of negative 0.16. So that's a concern. You can see it's in kind of a field. So what has probably happened here is some, some type of groundwork, right? There's been some tilling, potentially some, some building or something like that, some agricultural work potentially that has been done that has reduced that depth of cover. So now what you can do is you can actually get someone on site to actually to figure out what's going on in this particular area and determine what the next corrective actions are for this here. So this is a great example of what it looks like at an individual detail level for an individual Latin long. Now, along with that, of course, you know, we have clients who use this in many, many different ways, but there are ways to actually ground proof it and also do follow up and different actions you can do. So this is an example of that, right? Once we provide the information to you, you can assign it to a tech. A tech can go on site. A tech can actually do the, the ground proofing and or kick off additional activities that, they, that are needed. Any type of corrective, corrective actions that are needed, um, you know, if there's some work that needs to be done in that particular area.
Um, also with the ground proofing, they can record what the actual data is here. Um, you know, we can compare it with the, the, the measurement from the actual satellite imagery as well here. So field follow-ups are something that's very important to this entire, entire offering. Now, along with that, again, we do have clients who work in many, many different ways. Some clients also just want a CSV file or Excel spreadsheet of the depth of cover, especially the delta, the elevation delta, the change in that depth of cover. So what we allow clients to do here is just, you know, check off all the rows that they want to export out. You can check them all off here. You can export the data to CSV, which you'll see in the upper right-hand corner. And now you have a spreadsheet that you can, you know, do analysis on. You can sort by that, that, that elevation delta as well. And you can look at the calculated depth of cover, right? And you can actually run analysis on that, again, to kick off some other process in a different system if you want. Uh, we also have an API as well that clients can use to hit this data, and we have a webhook that can go into other systems. If you have a, another work order management system that you use, that data can, can go into that as well. Now, not only do we give you what we'll kind of call this mid view and a detailed view like I just showed you, there's also more of a macro view. That macro view is a heat map, and this is an example of that heat map. This heat map right now, we're zoomed way out right here, right? So when you're zoomed this far out here, it's showing you kind of like the bundled points. It's, 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 it's kind of everything's kind of bundled together. As you drill in as a user, the lat long points break, break out. And when you see the lat long points break out, now you're actually seeing, um, you know, what changes are across the board from a heat map standpoint. Again, another way to help you visualize and prioritize where you need to go in areas of focus here. So that's, that's vastly important here. And everything I've talked about at this point has been manual, right? And when I say manual, not not to the full extent, right? We we help you get the data, the prior readings inside of Utilisphere. Um, and then after that, you don't have to do anything. The readings automatically occur, you know, once we get the satellite imagery, the NSAR data coming in here, we're automatically calculating that depth of cover. But what we are seeing here is that there's a lot of a lot of automation that also helps assist with this entire process. So the most common things we're seeing are um, you know, if the change in if the delta, the change in depth of cover is a is significant then you know customers want to send off automated notifications to supervisors and managers in those areas right um so notifications automated notifications are a really big thing automatically assigning field text to go on site are another big thing so we're seeing a big automation aspect there and then the third thing is just automatically kicking off additional activities if there's additional uh, work that needs to be done um you know our system can kick off those additional activities based on that change in elevation um that, that we've seen here now, in terms of value, you know, we talked a lot to customers here. We always try to kind of average out what the value is that, that we see and what we hear, um, you know, in, in the marketplace. So in terms of the value or the return on investment, what we're really hearing is that on average, hiring a contractor costs about $220 per hour, and their work pace is usually two to three miles per hour. So again, not, not very quick, but also very costly, especially if you've got thousands of miles of pipeline. Um, you know, this can add up here and be a pretty big uh, budget item on your, on your, uh, on your budget here. Um, you know, <clears throat> with the satellite imagery, we can come in underneath of that, significantly underneath of that here. And it gives you, again, the greatest coverage amount if in your system as a whole here and really helps you focus, um, you know, where, where um, you know, where you need, it helps you prioritize where you need to focus here. Now, not only is there a massive return on investment, but I think, you know, the question we always get asked, and this is the number one question, we kind of save this for, for near the end, is how accurate you know, is the satellite at doing this, right? It's, it, it's great that we can do this, but if it's not accurate, then no one's going to use it, right? And that's where we're saying the accuracy is unbelievable here. And, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll take your eyes to kind of the middle of the screen on the left-hand side, the two bulk uh, points that are kind of bolded that say the mean DOC, the mean depth of cover, and the median depth of cover. So what we have done here is we've done several trials now. And with those several trials here, we're doing exactly what we're saying, right? Prior lat longs are provided to us with depth of cover readings at those exact locations. We run that satellite imagery on top of them. Uh, we produce the results. We calculate the delta, the change in depth of cover here. And what we have found is that the median depth of cover deviation is 5.72 inches. So the mean is below six inches of difference when it's been ground proofed, right? People go on, have gone on site and ground proofed um, our findings. Now, not only is the mean within six inches, but the median depth of cover deviation was 4.55 inches as well, which is within that six inch range as well. So both the median and the mean were within six inches. And I'm talking about 
That's the satellite data's accuracy versus someone on the ground then reading after we did the satellite the satellite uh, data, ground proofing it to say it, how accurate is the satellite imagery. So we're talking about we're more accurate. The satellite imagery is more accurate than six inches for both the mean and the median. Now, when you look over to the right hand side as well here, there are some outliers on either side. You'll see some, you know, some blue bars to the far right and far left. What we have found is from the time we did the satellite readings to the time the manual reading occurred for the, brown, the ground truthing, um, there was groundwork that happened in those particular areas. So there was, you know, there was some trench work on the side, uh, you know, where, where construction crews were doing some, some load work on the side during, on one of them. There was another one where a farmer did a bunch of tilling from the time we actually took the satellite imagery reading to the time it was ground proofed. So really, the reality is that the satellite imagery is within six inches across the board, and the outliers can be easily explained once you do the ground proofing. So the accuracy is unbelievable, right? For, especially when you think about, um, you know, it's, it's pointing satellites down to the earth using this INSAR technology. It's, it's phenomenal, uh, phenomenal accuracy. So this is something that we're very proud of because, again, with technology, especially on the forefront cutting edge, um, you never know the accuracy until you actually put it in practice. And we put it in practice now. And so this is something that that we're, we're very, very proud of here. Okay. Now, in terms of, you know, what what does a customer get when they actually use this, you know, the depth of cover offering here? Well, it comes with obviously the depth of cover form. And that's how we load in all of your prior information. There's lat longs of prior readings. And again, we don't care if it's LIDAR, manual, ILI, whatever the prior readings come from, we can load them in as long as we have those lat long locations. And that's the most important thing um, that we have that, right? Because once we have those, now we can point the satellite to the exact spot on earth of where the prior readings came from. What you also get is you get the data that comes from the satellites. And that shows you what the depth of cover is at those identified locations um, that, you, that you provide to us. Um, the good thing is you don't have to give us your entire pipeline system and segment, right? If there's only a particular area you're interested in, and, and you know it's it's out in the farmland, and there's a lot of tilling that occurs between seasons, and those are the highest interest to you. You can just give us that particular segment, uh, lat longs across that particular segment of your pipeline, and that's perfectly fine as well, right? Um, and then we also give you the ability to take those field actions, right? And also you can export the data. You can also do spreadsheets, and then there's a ton of automation that comes behind the scenes, um, you know, with with uh, with this particular offering. Now. You know, I've talked, uh, this is really couched underneath our offering that we're calling Earth Insights. Earth, Earth Insights is a much, much larger offering as a whole that provides different solutions underneath of it. And so I'll kind of talk through this a little bit just to kind of talk about what each one is here um, so everyone can kind of get an idea. But really, the, the most cutting edge things we're doing, whether it be AI using satellite imagery, um, you know, data analysis, data modeling type work, are underneath of this Earth Insights offering. And you'll see this become more prevalent as time goes on. So we're proud of each one of these things because these are really leading edge technologies here. So the Earth Insights AI for damage prevention, um, that is producing the risk model using artificial intelligence, the risk of an 811 dig ticket. So that is something we do. And not only can we do the predictability of a damage, but also the impact of the damage as well, um, which is something, something vastly different here. Earth Insights for pipeline integrity, that is very close to what we're talking about with depth of cover, just a little bit different. And there, we're looking at entire system and segments, not individual lat longs across the system and segment, but the entire system and segments to determine the risk. And we're using satellite imagery to look for methane, seismic slope, fire, soil moisture, and weather across those entire systems and segments now. So you can see your risk um, you know, across those here. <clears throat> the next one on the list is the Earth Insights for Pipeline Integrity Depth of Cover. That's the one we've been talking about now here, which, again, takes specific lat longs and depth of cover, uses satellite imagery to determine the, the elevation change or the elevation delta here. And that's what we've been talking about. And then there's really three new ones below here. We haven't really talked much about our customers with these, and we will be having additional webinars about these. So the Earth Insights Photo AI Audit, that's a, a very important one here that is brand new. So what we have done at Earth is we have trained models now, uh, image models uh, with using AI, where it can detect if there's like orange paint, orange flags for telecom, if there's blue paint, blue flags for water and so on. And, and then you can have this have our Earth Insights photo AI audit, audit every photo on every single ticket to say, is there, if you're telecom, is there orange paint and flags on? If your water, is there blue paint and flags on? If there's not, then it can kick off a notification to supervisor. So it's literally using AI to audit the photos on every single ticket. So that's something brand new. And we'll have some additional webinars about that. The Earth Insights for Weather and Topology, it's really think of it like Earth Insights for Geohazards here.
That one is brand new to the industry and no one else in the industry has done this before. This is something we're very, very proud of as well here. And this is very similar to the pipeline integrity stuff we've talked about prior, but used a little bit differently. This takes the satellite data for methane, seismic slope, fire, soil moisture, and weather. And then it looks, it uses that near real-time data to predict risk on tickets. That's important also for worker safety. So you, you can imagine if you're in an area, if a, if a dig request is an area with a massive slope and the weather is massive amounts of rainfall, you can kick off notifications to your worker going on site in that area saying, hey, you need to take some additional caution, right? There's additional risk here because of the weather and the slope that it's in. So it really does help with worker safety. Um, that's what that Earth Insights for Weather and Topology does. It also helps with liability as well because the, once the weather is attached to a ticket, that weather stays. Now you know the exact weather during that ticket, during the locate. Um, so if there, if there is any uh, you know, paint that was washed away, flags washed away from bad weather events, you can prove that a bad weather event occurred on that ticket. So that's something brand new as well. And then the last one is Earth Insights Ticket Clearing AI model. Think of this as it's very similar to the AI for damage risk, but a little bit different here. For the AI for damage risk, we use a ticket and then we use a damage to predict, you know, to, to predict the outcome or the risk of tickets. For ticket clearing, we're doing it a little bit differently. We're using the ticket and it is is clear flag to really predict, you know, to do what how humans do it, just how your humans sit there and, and determine, you know, can we clear a ticket or not? Um, or in the fields, and if you have um, you know, workers in a truck. Uh, you know, in the field, a lot of times they're looking at their tickets each day to say, can I just clear this from the truck? Uh, you know, we're taking that historical data to, to create the, the AI model that does exactly what humans do in deciding whether or not to clear tickets. So this is really our full suite of Earth Insights offerings. And there's a lot more, um, a lot more um, you know, webinars and information to come here. A lot, a lot more new things that we're producing as well. And we're excited about each one of these. Um, but for depth of cover for today's purpose, um, you know, this is a, uh, uh, this is one that that we love the accuracy of. We absolutely love what we're doing there as well here. So that's that's everything right there. Um, you know that that I wanted to walk through with everyone. Um, I, I you know right now, feel free to ask any questions that you have here. Use the chat to ask those questions here, um, and I will answer them as they as they come in order. Also, as we're waiting for some questions to pop in here, um, just a few additional things. Remember that. Um, you know, we do have, uh, you know, we do have our YouTube. So all of our webinar content will be put up on that YouTube. So go in and look at the earth.com handle on YouTube and you'll find us there and see all the content. Also, if you have any questions about what I've showed today or any, anything at all, feel free to email me. My email address is up on the screen here as well. So um, no issues at all. So we do have a question that has come in here and it says, what is, uh, what is the accuracy of your depth of cover solution and how does it compare to LIDAR? So that is a that is a, a very good uh, a very good um, you know question here, and when you think about it, our accuracy our, our technology is, is significantly more accurate than lidar. So it, you know again we're within that six inch range for both the median and the mean, and any of the ones that are outliers we can actually tell you why the outliers occurred, especially to your ground truthing right. We can see that and tell you why. Um, the other thing I want to point out is remember lidar is extremely expensive right extremely expensive. And what we have is a more cost effective using satellites. Again, we can, you know, we can uh, use the imagery to, to provide more coverage, which actually reduces the cost here, um, which is an important thing. Now, next question I'm getting here. Um, how can you identify a pipeline in a congested corridor with other pipelines to get the correct, uh, the correct depth of cover here? Um, and what we do here is we actually, we, so we measure elevation changes in specific areas and that data is a proxy to determine the depth of cover. So it's a proxy. So that type of method really helps us identify where elevation has shifted over time and whether it's due to human activity or natural processes, right? It could be for either one. So for example, there could be like soil accumulation that increases the depth of cover while activities like harvesting and tilling can reduce it. So even if there's an area where there's a, you know, a, a corridor with a bunch of other pipelines, you know, it still works perfectly fine in those particular areas because we're using it we're using it as a proxy to determine that depth of cover. So that's a that's a that's a it's a great question, and actually we get that all the time here. Okay. And another question that's popped in here. Okay, what is the uh, what is the maximum depth in which the satellite data is accurate? Okay, and so um, you know with this one, I, I think I think with this one, I, I think I can answer. I think I understand this question here. So. So with the availability of the past measurements, the depth itself is not an issue, right? So we can focus on the elevation reading change over time. 
So, so what happens is, is that, you know, you provide us the initial, the initial set, the initial depth of cover using like our hand probe. And then what we can do is we can take that depth of cover and then measure that exact spot on earth now to say, what is the change? And now once we have those, the, the initial and now the change, we can do it over time so that really the, 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 the depth is not an issue. The depth does not become an issue then. So that is a another good question here as well. Okay, any, uh, let me look here to see. I, I'm gonna see if we have any other questions. We have another Q&A. Um, the question is, what satellite constellation are you utilizing? Uh, that came in uh, via the, uh, the Q&A side as well. Um, and I, I, what I'll do is I'll get back to you on that side. We can talk to our, we'll talk to our satellite provider and I can get back to you on that particular um, answer about the satellite constellations here. Okay, any other uh, questions here? I'm looking here, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at different screens because questions are coming in a few different places here. Okay, and I think, I think that's it for the, the majority of questions here. Um, again, you know, appreciate everyone's time today. You know, this will be posted again to, to YouTube here, that earth.com handle on YouTube. Uh, you'll be able to see this content. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at any time about questions that, you know, anything with their solutions, including this depth of cover here. But other than that, I appreciate everyone's, uh, everyone's time here. Have a great day and look forward to talking to everyone here.